Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome back. Let's get back into the Word of God. Let's go to Galatians chapter 6, beginning at verse 1, all the way down to verse 18. Galatians chapter 6. You got your Bibles? Well, all right, let's begin. Verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. The Apostle Paul, who is a disciple of Jesus Christ, he's also a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin, the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin called Jews. He's ministering unto the Galatians, who, are, who also are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, of the ten tribes of the northern kingdom of Israel, or Ephraim, that was scattered among the Gentiles, no longer referred to as Israel or Ephraim, but referred to as uh, Gentiles or heathens or uncircumcised, or whatever location where they're where they're living, in this case, Galatia. So they're referred to as Galatians, but they are, in fact, Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, the northern kingdom, the ten tribes that are scattered. What you have to understand about the scriptures, you have to keep them in context. You have to understand that from Genesis to Revelation, the scriptures are for, to, and about Israel. People take the scriptures out of context all the time. And try to make it apply to everybody else. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. They try to make it work. That's why we have Christianity and, and Catholicism. But Christianity and Catholicism are false doctrines. Jesus did not come to start any religion. He did not come to start Christianity or Catholicism. He came to save his people from their sins. And that's proven throughout the scripture. But uh, the Gentiles, the Japhet Gentiles, who are the Northern European uh, races, uh, the Americas and U Russia also, they brought in Christianity and Catholicism, trying to incorporate the word of God with, with a false doctrine. And trying to say Jesus came to save everybody. That's not true. Now the Gentiles are mentioned in Genesis chapter 10. Uh, Noah had three sons. Japhet, Ham, and Shem. And Japhet is the only one mentioned as having Gentiles. Ham does not have Gentiles nor does Shem. And Jesus also mentioned uh he said that you will fall by the edge of the sword and you will be led away captive into all nations, referring to the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. He said Jerusalem will be trodden down of the Gentiles. He was talking about the Japhet Gentiles, the northern uh, European nations. America wasn't in there yet. <laughs> but... Uh, Jerusalem at this point is trodden down of the Gentiles, and it's still trodden down. And it says, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So these are the times of the Gentiles, and the times of the Gentiles won't be fulfilled until the Lord Jesus comes back. So the people over in the land called the nation of Israel are not Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. They're not of the tribe of Judah. They're not of the seed of Abraham. They're not of any of the descendants of Abraham. They're false. They're fake. They're uh, fraud. Everything that they're doing is a lie. They say they're Jews, but they do lie. The scripture called them the synagogue of Satan. It said that they call themselves Jews, but do lie. So they say they're Jewish because they wish they were Jews. But they are not God's chosen people. God's chosen people are scattered to the four winds. But in 1948, when they was established as a nation, everyone believes 
that they are God's chosen people. But according to scripture, God's chosen people is scattered to the four winds. And we will be scattered until the Lord Jesus comes back to gather us and bring us back to our own homeland. That's how we ended up here in America. Because we were led away captive into all nations. The scripture in the Old Testament said that you will be brought into Egypt again in ships. <laughs> That's what happened to us. We were brought into the land of captivity, bondage, uh, and led away captive into all nations. That's how we ended up in America. So we are, in fact, the chosen people of the Lord God, the the, son, the children of Abraham, Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, we're of the tribe of Judah and Benjamin. So that's who we are. A lot, a lot of people don't understand that. <laughs> that's why I take the time to try to explain it. But you're going to have to go back and research the scriptures to see if the things that I'm saying are so. So that's who Paul is ministering to. He's ministering to Hebrew Israelites in the, of the seed of Abraham of the ten tribes of the northern kingdom that scattered among the Gentiles in Galatia. He's saying, brethren. He's not talking to all the any of the Japhet Gentiles. He's talking to Hebrew Israelites. He says, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, a man, who's he talking about? Any man? No, he's talking about all of Israel, Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. If a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Now he's talking to brethren, believers of the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Uh, those who of, are of Israel that believe. He's not talking to the non-believers of Israel. Only to those that believe the gospel. Just because you're Israel, you don't get a free ticket into the kingdom of heaven if you do not believe the gospel of the kingdom, that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, the Savior, and died on the cross, was buried and raised on the third day, sit at the right hand of God, making intercessions for Israel, and is coming back to save his people from their sins, to gather us. That's the gospel of the kingdom. And... Your 501c3 corporations, pastors, preachers, and teachers of the Antichrist church system do not minister uh, according to the gospel. They do not tell you who Israel is. They do not tell you, uh, preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. They do not tell you which, which who are the Gentiles. <laughs> so you're left ignorant about a lot of different things and you're deceived. They tell you that Jesus is coming back for Christians, that he came to start Christianity. <laughs> Jesus is not coming back for Christians. He did not come to start Christianity. He did not come to start a religion. Jesus is coming back for his people. Verse 2, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the, the law of Christ. So, the scripture specifically talk about Israel. The law was given to Israel. Jesus is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. Judah is the chosen tribe. Jesus is of the tribe of Judah. Jesus is coming back for his people. Verse 2 again says, Bear ye one another's burdens, so fulfill the law of Christ. Jesus said, Love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, the love that you have one for another. Verse 3, for if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceive himself. Talking again to believers of Hebrew Israelite descent that believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the ones that are arrogant, the ones that <laughs> go around spreading false doctrine. He said, for if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceive himself. So a lot of the Hebrew Israelites, some of them think just because they are Israel, 
<laughs> that they're going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. You're not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven just because you are Israel. You have to believe the gospel that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, sent to forgive us and save us from our sins. So if you don't believe that, you're only de deceiving yourself. If you're Israel. Verse 4. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. So if you are Israel and you believe the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, you have to prove your own work. Let every man prove his own work, and then shall you have rejoicing in, him, in himself alone and not in another. Because when Jesus comes back, he's going to reward every man according to his work. Every man of Israel. You're going to have to give an account of deeds done, whether good or bad. So you have to give an account if your works are good or whether your works are bad. So uh, you're going to have rejoicing if there's good. But if it's not, woe unto you. <laughs> Verse 5. For every man shall bear his own burden. You're going to have to bear your own burden, especially when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Can't nobody stand beside you and bear your burdens at that time. You got to bear them yourself. Verse 6. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Uh, this scripture is talking about liberality and given to those who are ministering the gospel of the kingdom. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. If someone is ministering the gospel unto you, teaching you the, the, the gospel of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, if you're being taught, the scripture says communicate with him that teaches you in all good things. You know, if he have any needs or he... Uh, lacking in any way, help him to continue the ministry of the kingdom of, of the gospel uh, any way you can as bring, bring glory to the Father and to the Son uh, and, uh, and giving of whatever way you can help benefit the gospel of the kingdom. Verse 7 be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So don't try to do it out of your own fleshly desires and trying to mock God. Because whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. God knows the thoughts and intents of your heart. Um... Remember in the scripture about Cain and Abel, they brought their gifts unto the Lord. The Lord had respect unto uh, Abel's gift, but he didn't have, did not have respect unto Cain's gift. So whatever you give, give is unto the Lord. Not uh, trying to be all puffed up and say, see what I gave and, you know, pat yourself on the back. That's not giving in the right spirit. Verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So when you sow into the gospel, you're doing it un as unto the Lord. Jesus said, give. If you give to the poor, you give unto the Lord. So when you give, give as unto the Lord and not as unto man to, to show off and that. Have people look at you and say, see what I did? That's why the gospel is being preached, because I gave all this money. <laughs> you don't need to be a show-off about what you're doing for the Lord. Let it be done in secret. Nobody has to know. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Do it as unto the Lord. Verse 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. 
I know it's been a long time coming, but the Lord is coming back. <laughs> it may seem like it's taking a long time, but from him, from his, for his perspective, it hasn't been a long time. We think, you know, living a long life is living to like 70, 80, 90, 100 years old. That's only a, a drop in the bucket to the Lord. One day is of a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. So sometime in this journey, in this walk, things don't always go the way we want to, it to go. Scripture says, and let us not be weary in well-doing. Keep doing well. Keep doing what you're supposed to do to uplift the kingdom of God. For in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. You can't faint. You can't give up. You can't stop. You got to keep preaching. Keep living for the Lord. Keep walking in the spirit. Keep doing everything is unto the Lord. Remember, this life, again, is not about you. It's not your life anymore. It belongs to the Lord. So everything that you do is to please the Lord and not yourself. Verse 10, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Again, he's speaking specifically and directly to Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, ministering primarily to the northern kingdom of the ten tribes of Israel that are scattered abroad and here in Galatia. But he's also, many of the uh, southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin received the word he's ministering to them also but only to the ones that believe the gospel of the kingdom uh, especially them but if they even if they don't believe do good unto them hebrew israelites of the seed of abraham and that's who he's talking about all men still talking about hebrew israelites of the seed of abraham that's who he's referring to unto and especially unto them who are of the household of faith. That's who the household of faith is for. It's for Israel. It's not for everybody else in the whole wide world. I know you want to believe that that it is, but you got to go back and research the scriptures if you do not believe what I'm saying is true. I'm not just making it up. <laughs> God, I'll be in trouble with the Lord for doing that. And forgive me, Lord, if I'm wrong, but I believe that I'm doing it according to scriptures. Verse 11, you see how large a letter I have written unto you with my own hand. So Paul is saying, I'm doing this with my own hand. I'm writing this epistle unto you Galatians, who are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, the northern kingdom, northern tribe, northern kingdom of the ten tribes. I've written this epistle unto you with my own hand. Verse 12, as many as desire to make a fair show in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only least that ye they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. <laughs> so again, Paul is ministering to the ten tribes of the northern kingdom, telling them, look, your faith in the Lord is enough. You do not have to be circumcised to follow the Lord. But there are those who are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, primarily of the northern kingdom of, of the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin, coming behind Paul telling the, the ten tribes of the northern kingdom, y'all, y'all can't just believe. Y'all got to also be circumcised. Paul saying they trying to constrain you to be circumcised, only at least they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. You know, you're not that being circumcised, you're not gonna suffer persecution for the per, for the cross of Christ. Circumcision is not gonna save you, even if you're suffering the persecution. <laughs> you're only gonna be saved by believing the kingdom of the gospel that Jesus died for your sins, having faith in the word of God. You're saved by faith through grace, not by circumcision. Verse 13, for neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. 
<laughs> he said, the people that's telling you this, they don't even keep the law. <laughs> but they have, they desire you to be circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. They think that making you get circumcised, they doing the will of God. So they can, see, Lord, we these all these people, we getting circumcised in your name. Jesus didn't tell you to go circumcise people in his name. <laughs> but these are, this is the false doctrine that's going around in this time. So even then, there was false doctrine, like there's false doctrine today. Christianity, Catholicism, they're false doctrines. Jesus is not coming back to save everybody. He's only coming to save his people. He didn't come to start a, a religion. He didn't come to start Christianity. He came to save his people from their sins, who are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. Verse 14, but God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. So Paul is saying, God forbid that I should glory. I'm not going to glory uh, in anything, save the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that I'm going to glory in. By whom the world is crucified unto me. He said the world, everything in this world is crucified unto me. I don't have anything. The only thing I have is that I'm crucified with Christ. That's all that, that I know. And, and I unto the world. The world is crucified to, unto me and, and I'm, I'm crucified unto the world. That's how it is. <laughs> Paul said I don't care about anything else in this world. I'm crucified. I'm not living my life in this world for myself. I'm living it for the gospel of the kingdom of God. And that's how we have to live it. As being saints of the most high. We are the church. Israel is the church. The church is Israel. Israel is the body of Christ. People try to take the scriptures out of context. You 501c3 corporation. The anti-Christ church system. Y'all try to make the scriptures fit anything and everybody. Your, your pastors, preachers, and teachers, y'all going to have to give an account of that in the day of judgment. Because if you blind lead the blind, you're both going to fall into the ditch. You, you're leading people astray. Uh, verse 15, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. He said, you're not saved by circumcision, whether you're circumcised or not. It's not saving you, but you are a new creature in Christ. Verse 16, as many as walk according to this rule, peace be unto them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. Okay, he said, as many as walk according to this rule, that uh, we're a new creature in Christ, peace be unto them. And, uh, and mercy, and unto the Israel of God. So Paul just comes straight out with it and tell you, <clears throat> peace be unto them, and mercy unto the Israel of God. And that may seem strange why he would say that, but it's not strange, because that's who he's talking to, that's who he's talking about. That Galatians, who he's ministering to, are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, the northern kingdom of the ten tribes that scattered abroad. That's why he said, unto the Israel of God. That's who they are. That's who we are. We are the Israel of God. <laughs> but he said Israel of God referring primarily to the ten tribes that are scattered abroad because they were referred to as Israel. That mean that's who they were before they sinned. They was Israel or Ephraim, but they're no longer referred to as Israel. They're referred to as Gentiles or uncircumcised or heathens or whatever location that they're living in. But he said, no, y'all Israel, I'm going to refer to you as the Israel of God. And that's what he did because that's who they are. <laughs> so he just proved all the points that I've been trying to make. 
All the epistles that he wrote to is to the Israel of God. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 17. From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I'm, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. He let I'm not studying anything what anybody else say. That's now I'm using the old Southern term studying. <laughs> I mean studying. It uh, whatever somebody it does not bother me whatever anything anybody else says. I'm I bear the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ in my body, so I'm not going to be troubled by anything that they say or do. I'm going to keep preaching the word of God whether they like it or not, and I'm gonna keep telling you. That we are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. We're scattered abroad into all the kingdoms of the earth. Everywhere. Jesus is coming back for us. We are of the tribe of Judah and Benjamin. The southern kingdom. He's coming back for us. He's coming back for all the tribes of Israel that are scattered abroad. Verse 18, brethren, again, he calling us brethren because he's speaking directly to Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. He's not speaking to everybody else in the whole wide world. Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ himself is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Jesus came to save his people from their sins, who are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. Thank you for listening. See you next time. Shalom.